This is a short video on the performance of the thoracal lumbar interfascial plane or T-lip block as we currently do it at Toronto Western Hospital. The T-lip block is a paraspinal fascial plane block that was first described in 2015 by Han and colleagues as an injection between multifidus and longissimus thoracis muscles in the lumbar area. A modified T-lip block involving a more lateral site of injection between longissimus thoracis and iliocostalis muscles has been reported, but here we will be discussing the original technique of Han and colleagues with a slight modification of our own. At Toronto Western Hospital, the primary indication for the T-lip block is as part of the anaesthetic technique, together with conscious sedation, for permanent implantation of spinal cord stimulators by our chronic pain colleagues. It may also be used for perioperative analgesia in lumbar spine surgery. Preparation for the block should include the following. Two syringes of a 50-50 mix of lidocaine 2% and bupivacaine 0.5% with 5 micrograms per mil of epinephrine. We use the local anesthetic combination in this setting because in our experience, it provides quicker onset of a more dense sensory loss, although the duration of analgesia may be reduced somewhat. The epinephrine limits systemic absorption and the risk of local anesthetic systemic toxicity. A curve probe is usually indicated in the adult patient for adequate penetration in a wider field of view. And as these are single injection blocks, a 22 gauge 80 mm block needle is appropriate. To avoid wastage of local anesthetic, it's recommended that hydrolocation with an inactive fluid such as dextrose 5% be used to confirm entry into the correct tissue plane. Finally, for patient comfort, we usually infiltrate the skin and underlying muscle along the needle track with 2 to 3 mils of lidocaine. Following consent and timeout procedures, the patient is placed in the prone position with intravenous access and continuous monitoring of vital signs. Sedation is given as required. The ultrasound machine should be positioned for optimal ergonomics. In this arrangement, injection on the contralateral side is usually performed using a backhanded needle insertion. If one is not comfortable with this, the machine should be moved as needed. We recommend starting with a scout scan using the parasagittal oblique view to identify the L5-S1 interspace and to count up to the desired interspace. For our spinal cord stimulator insertions, this is usually L12 or L23 which corresponds to the L2 or L3 transverse processes, respectively. Once this level is identified, the probe is turned into a transverse orientation and the block is performed using an in-plane needling approach. There are three muscle groups in the lumbar spine area. From medial to lateral, they are multifidus, longissimus thoracis, and iliocostalis. The lumbar spinal nerves emerge from the intervertebral foramina and split into dorsal and ventral rami. The dorsal ramus ascends to emerge onto the posterior surface of the vertebra at the junction between the superior articular process and the transverse process. Here it splits into three branches, the medial, intermediate, and lateral branches, which continue to ascend into a superficial location, usually following intermuscular planes. The basis of the T-lip block is that a large volume of local anesthetic injected into the plane between multifidus and longissimus will spread proximally towards the branch point of the dorsal ramus and thus anesthetize all the nerves supplying the skin and muscles of the lumbar area. We have modified the original technique to include a second injection superficial to the posterior thoracal lumbar fascia investing the muscles to ensure better coverage of subcutaneous nerve branches. With the probe in a transverse position over the midline, the acoustic shadows of the spinous process of the underlying vertebra is identified together with the superior articular process and transverse process. Using these as landmarks, multifidus can then be identified as the muscle immediately adjacent to the midline. Longissimus thoracis is lateral to multifidus, and the plane between them can be identified using the following characteristics. First, the two muscles are usually different in echo texture. Second, at the level of L2, the multifidus also has a characteristic rounded appearance. At lower lumbar levels, it is much smaller and more triangular. Third, 
The dividing plane usually runs between the tips of the superior articular process and the spinous process, so these can be used as landmarks. This MRI image shows the fat-filled planes between the muscles and how they communicate with each other. After local anesthetic infiltration, insert the block needle towards the deeper end of the plane between multifidus and longissimus, close to the superior articular process. Entry into this plane is often signaled by a tactile pop or give and is confirmed with hydrolocation. An expansile pattern of spread traveling up and down along the plane will be seen. This is quite different from intramuscular injection and spread. Inject 14 to 15 mils of local anesthetic into this plane. Withdraw the needle then until the tip is lying above the posterior investing fascia of the muscle and confirm its position with hydrolocation again to visualize spread over the surface of the muscles. At this point, inject the remaining 5 to 6 mils of local anesthetic. Repeat the block on the other side.